Hey, it's Random Code here, and today in this video we're going to talk about an AI which can play Tic Tac Toe. And the type of AI implemented is something called Adversarial Search, which means it's an AI that plays against an opponent, so it takes in a state of the game and returns the next move, which leads to a win. And the specific implementation of this is called Minimax Search, which is a search form that for each move, create a, like, kind of like a graph of all possible moves, then calculates which move most likely leads to a win. And I think first I'm just going to go through the running code and showcase how it works, and then later on we can go through some of the code. And of course, if you want to learn more of this, there's always going to be a link in the description where you can have a look at the code yourself to get a better understanding of how it actually works. But basically, I have an adversary search tick to toe class. I have a state class, which contains my basic state component with some extra information. And I have a main class which kind of like plays the game and takes some user input using a scanner in Java, for example. But if we just play the game, we can see that first we're just printing a bunch of ones, zero and minus one, which is kind of a print for each time our search finds some kind of solution. Or in this case, it goes through all the solution and find a terminal state, where it's either a win for the AI, which is a one, zero, which is a draw, or a minus one, which would be a win for the player. And what this then simply does is that first we have an empty state, empty board. It then creates all possible moves from this empty board. And then for each move, it calculates, does this move lead to a win, a lose, or draw? And we then get here which of the solutions, or kind of like end states, we have for this specific move. So for example, we are told that if we move an X at the first position, we end up in a draw, second position, end up a draw, and so on. And this is actually quite interesting because it tells us that no matter which move the AI makes first, it should lead to a draw. But this is because minimax, minimax search works in a way that it assumes that both players are playing the perfect move every time. Which of course is correct. If each player made the perfect move every time, it would always end up in a draw and take two. But it plays against a human, which is going to make mistakes, obviously. So we would quickly see if, for example, if I say I would like my O to be at the position of 8, we can see that now suddenly some of the moves there can make leads to a loss state, a draw, or a win state. So, for example, now we can see that it puts it here. So it's kind of setting up a win if I do not block at 1. So I just block at 1. I now have a problem because the AI set up a situation where it can now both win on the column, first column, or diagonal. So no matter which move I make now, I'll lose the game. So for example, if I did three, I'm gonna put an X at the position of four, and it won on the diagonal. But if we play the game in a bit of a different way, in a smarter way, I have at least learned now from actually playing against this AI that if my opponent puts the first move in the corner, I need to do the middle. As you can see now, because I made the perfect move, still every move leads to a draw. But now I would need to block on the second position, second index. I then need to block me down here. I then need to block the three. And now we're ending up in a situation, as you see, the AI now recognizes that either we end up in a draw, it loses or it loses, so it place for a draw now, technically, and I would need to do anything, it doesn't matter at this point, and we end up in a position where no one went. So as you see, it's actually quite interesting because the AI is assuming that both players always make the perfect move. Some of the moves just simply doesn't seem to matter for the AI. It doesn't really look for the best of the, the moves because all the moves should not matter because it's assuming it's playing against someone that's perfect. but Playing take to toe as humans, we're not going to make the perfect move every time. So, this AI is either going to tie or win. It can't ever lose because it's, it doesn't make any mistakes, and you only lose in take to toe if you make a mistake. So, that's like the basic concept of the AI. And then I'm just going to go through some of the code to get a better understanding of how it actually works. So, inside the code, we have a few components which are quite interesting. I have this min max decision maker, which is the basic concept of my AI. Then, uses a max value and a min value method, 
which kind of calculates the best move from the perspective of the X player or from the O player. And then my, which makes this actually work, is that my O player then kind of looks at the moves based from the X player, so kind of like change between one of each other. So the first move would be made by the X player, then the second by the O player, and the X player, the O player. And then by doing this, we can see if we create all possible states, and then assume that the X player is doing the best move at this state, and then the O player is doing the best move, we can then see how all the moves would lead to either a win or a loss or a draw. And then we return this, and that's kind of how it works, more or less. And it's, it's, it's not complex, but it's also not simple. We just need to get this understanding that we're creating all possible moves, and then for each move we are either checking what would the X player do if the X player is very smart, or what would the O player do if they're very smart. And then just doing it for every move, and then changing, because we know that on takes it so, X player moves, O player moves, X player moves, O player moves. And then we have some extra, not helper functions, but functions to check different states. For example, we have a function to check if a specific state is terminal. So if we at a given state have a win, a loss, or a draw, we then have a utility to check if we had a win, loss, or draw, or more specifically, if we had win or loss, then who won, more or less. And I have a check states, which just simply makes it easier in Java, which is just a switch statement where I can just check is the like the first row, so at 0, 1, 2, do we have all X's or all O's, 3, 4, 5, so first row, second row, third row, the three columns and the two diagonals. And then just check if we have anyone wins, and in case of a one state, who won. We then also have a successor of, we simply check are we at a position where X should move or a position where O should move. And then we just simply create all possible moves from a given state, which is done by simply, let me just show this for example. So when we have an empty board, all the possible moves would be an X at the first position, at the second position, third position, and so on. Or if we had some of the moves already taken, it would just check, can we place at X at the first position? If we can, place X, and this is a move. If we can't, just skip this move. Then the second position, can we place an X? We can place, it's a move. And then we can just do this over and over and over again. So, which is one of the actually quite important takeaways from this algorithm is that it's very, very, very expensive to run. Because we're calculating all possible moves from a given state every time. And as you can see, this is just a six go, which is actually quite a simple game. But if you're doing something more complex, for example, like chess, it would take an insane amount of calculations. So this is a decent way of making AIs for simple games, for, but for more complex games, it just takes way too much time because we do need to do way too many calculations. But this is the basic concept, and I think the main concept to understand is that we're simply creating all possible moves, and then kind of simulating how each of the players would move, assuming they would do the best move each time, and we can then get a list of which moves lead to win, loss, or draw, and then our AI simply makes that move. But again, it ends up in a weird situation sometimes where all the moves technically would end up being a draw if both players make the best move, so the move doesn't matter, but it probably still does. Because at least from experience, we know that putting an X at the corner is probably better than putting it in the middle. Or maybe in even in the middle of the board is, might be a better starting move. But this is not a part of this AI because this AI is just simply looking at moves based on how the players would play. But I hope you have a better understanding of how an AI of a ticket tool would work now, and maybe have a little bit of a feeling of how AI actually works in the way that we are manipulating some things, we're doing some specific thing, we're not just creating some kind of magical setup, we're actually thinking about stuff, and in this case we're simply just checking everything. It's not smart, or it kind of is in the end, but it's not really smart in the way that it knows what position to make based on some magical thinking. It just simply does all the moves, and then because we're doing all the moves, we can calculate which is the best ones. So, I hope you learned something, and if you did, please leave a like and subscribe, and I wish you all a wonderful 